Assalamu alaikum students This is our lecture for the second semester BS English Our paper is literary movements and we are going to go through the idea of odes in English literature today As you remember that we have been through the Ode to the West Wind by PB Shelley as we have covered it in the class we are going to cover the second ode that is included in our syllabus through our online class ode to autumn or just to autumn is an ode written by john keats this lecture is about that poem what is an ode the definition an ode is a short lyric poem that praises an individual an idea or an event the ode is a poem that is about a person or an idea or something that happened or a thing that is a uh, concrete thing and this poem is written in lyrical style it is very musical and it is mostly short odes are not very long poems in ancient greece odes were originally accompanied by music odes were written to be sung with the music and audience was there to appreciate them that is why the wording should be short and musical in fact the word ode comes from the greek word adein which means to sing or to chant so the odes are simply the poems that are sung odes are often ceremonial that mean that odes are written for some special occasion or a ceremony and formal in tone odes are formal these are not informal and these poems are written with a certain wording and a certain style there are several different types of odes but they are all highly structured and adhere to poetic forms the types of the odes are many we shall discuss them in our assignment not here those poems are beautifully structured and there is a great effort put in making them into a musical poem and there are some typical poetic forms that are followed while writing an ode that means that odes are not simple poems that can be written in any way by taking liberties odes are written in a formal setting in a proper way and there are some rules and regulations without them an ode cannot be an ode to autumn is the last of keats odes it celebrates the season of fall when the leaves are turning golden and there are mists all around every season has its own beauty mostly the season of autumn is associated with decay with death and with the, the falling of leaves and that is why it is considered a sad season so keats says here in his poem given it a new type of vent and he says that the autumn is not something you should dislike it is something that you should be actually liking because autumn is lovely as beautiful as the spring is keats has written many odes while six of them are world famous and you will go through their names Ode on a Grecian Urn a poem that is he has written about a uh, Greek vase Ode to Indolence a poem that he has written about indolence that means staying alone and uh, not doing anything a lazy sort of life Ode to Melancholy celebrates the mood of melancholy that it is not something that should be shunned it should be rather embraced Ode to the Nightingale is about the song of a bird that the poet hears in the night and he realizes that this song has been heard by emperor and the clown all type of people for ages Ode to Psyche is for the soul because psyche represents the soul love of cupid and psyche is also celebrated in it to autumn although with this poem he does not use the word ode still it is an ode and it is about that season of the mists and fruits and beautiful yellow leaves here the picture shows the tickets that are uh, uh, celebrating the 200 years of odes by keats 
you can see that there are six tickets and all of them are celebrating one different ode. Let's see, check it out. Can you identify which ode is represented in which ticket? To Autumn Interpretation of the poem The poem was written in 1819 with other odes. It is considered the last of the famous six odes. This is a poem that is very pictorial. The language is and imagery is so nicely contrived that you can almost see and smell the sights and sound and smells that Keats is showing you from his native England that how autumn or fall feels in England. We start our poem, season of mists and mellow fruitfulness. Close bosom friend of the maturing sun, conspiring with him how to load and bless with fruit the vines that round the thatch eaves run, to bend with apples the most cottage tree, and fill all fruit with ripeness to the core, to swell the gourd and plump the hazel shells with a sweet kernel to set budding more, and still more later flowers for the bees. Until they think warm days will never cease, for summer has overbrimmed their slammy cells. Season of mists. In the fall season, there are mists and the misty scenes looks even more beautiful with the fog all around. And it is a lovely look and mellow fruitfulness. Fall is the season where mostly the fruits are picked like grapes and uh, apples and apricots close bosom friend of the maturing sun the sun is maturing the sun is turning in its course and it has become matured after the summer and this season is a friend of the sun because sun is responsible for ripening all sort of fruits and vegetables conspiring with him this season plans with the sun how to load and bless with fruit the vines. That how the vines that are the grape vines full of their fruit, they are loaded with fruit and they are blessed by it because of the sun and the autumn. Sun and autumn conspire together, plan together how to ripen the fruit. That round the thatch eaves run. Thatch eaves. Thatched cottage is a speciality of the, uh, especially uh, in England and Scotland and all around the places like Ireland. There is a certain type of roof, a sloping roof that is made with thatch. So the cottages that are thatched beautifully and they have some eaves. Eaves mean beautiful little windows. On those windows, the grape vines are hanging and grapes are hanging over. Keats shows us a very beautiful scene that the fruit of the grape vines is hanging over the beautiful classical cottage windows. To bend with apples the most cottage trees. And so many apples are on the trees that they are bending down. And the, those trees are covered by moss by a special kind of uh, green covering that is also a living plant. And those trees are close by to the British cottages that look very pretty in the typical British countryside glory. And so many apples are there that trees are bending down. And fill all fruit with ripeness to the core. This is the fall season and the sun who are responsible for ripening the fruit so thoroughly that it is ripened to the core. The words that he has used make one even taste an apple that is totally ripe and very sweet. To swell the gourd and the gourd that is a vegetable to make it bigger and larger autumn and sun are working together and plump the hazel shells and hazel nuts that are also a very popular nut in the world and it is one part of the dry fruits. They are getting plump, thicker, fatter because of the role of the sun and the role of autumn season. With a sweet kernel 
and inside those hazelnuts there is a very sweet kernel that can be eaten by human beings and animals alike so the fruitfulness is all because of two factors the autumn and the sun to set budding more and still more later flowers for the bees until they think warm days will never cease and still more fall is not a season when there are no flowers flowers are not dead the later flowers some flowers are blooming only in fall and there are so many of them so many types of them that bees can think that this is still summer bees would be deceived that the summer has not ended for summer has over brimmed their clammy cells and the summer has made their honey so much that it is dripping it is full all the uh, bees hives are full of honey the goodness of it the sweetness of it because of summer and after summer even in the fall those bee hives are full of sweet honey second stanza who hath not seen the oft amid the store keet speaks to the autumn or the fall like she is a human being this is called personification in english literature he says that who has not seen you you are in, among your store that mean all the fruits and vegetables and crops that are being cut in the autumn you can be easily seen there sometimes whoever seeks abroad may find someone who seeks he might find you as you know that there is a chinese saying that seek and you will find and this is the same thing that has been written in bible that knock and the door will be open to you so keet says if you want to find autumn you need to strive for it struggle for it go and find it you will find her the sitting careless on a granary floor autumn can be seen sitting careless like a girl on the fro floor of a storehouse where the grain is stored thy hair soft lifted by the winnowing wind and slow beautiful light winds come into the store and they uh, lift the hair of autumn like she is a woman or she is a girl sitting there he is personifying autumn that everywhere where you see the fruit and grains and vegetables being cut you can find autumn there or on a half reefed furrow sound asleep and he says that there can be a furrow from which half the crop has been taken and half the crop is still inside the furrow and uh, uh, the autumn the personification of autumn that person seems to be sleeping there drowsed with the fume of poppies and it would seem like autumn is drunk with the fume of poppies poppy flower you know is a red flower that produces the narcotics and it is uh, believed although it is not true it is believed that the poppies perfume makes you very sleepy so poppies are also found in the autumn mostly in the fields this is the time of the rising of the poppies in england that red flowers can be seen dotting beautiful fields that are full of wheat and other crops so poppy is also associated with the fall and kids would say that fall is sleeping like a girl who is drowsed by the fume of poppies while thy hook spares the next swath in all its twine flowers and he says that there is a hook there is a cutting edge that is cutting the crop uh, just like a skith and he says that autumn when it cuts the uh, uh, grain it leaves something and what does it leave it leaves a tuft of flowers later on thomas hardy would write a poem by the name of a tuft of flowers that was extremely inspired by romantic poetry hardy would say in that poem that a worker who is cutting the crop leaves one tuft of flowers uncut because he is fond of beauty of nature and he would like the other people to see and enjoy the flowers as well here keats is saying that autumn is something that lets the flowers live it is not death to flowers it is something 
that would let the fruit and flowers live side by side it is not a bad thing autumn is a fine season and sometimes like a gleaner thou the ski steady thy laden head across a brook sometimes like a gleaner like a farmer who has uh, taken down some crop and uh, put it into a basket and put that crop on his head he says that sometime autumn is seen like it has put a crop on her head with uh, in a basket and it is steadying the burden because you know when you walk with something on your head you have to keep your balance and if a girl is crossing a brook and she has a basket on her head full of fruit or vegetables she should also be very careful about keeping her balance just like that autumn her personification can be seen crossing a brook keeping a balance and carrying a basket he is showing that actually autumn although you cannot see it you can feel it everywhere or by a cider press with patient look the watches the last using hour by hour cider press is a sort of machine that is used to take out the juice of apples to make cider or make vinegar out of it he says that autumn would be standing by a cider press patiently and watching the last drops falling one by one she can do it for hours in all that stanza he has given different roles to autumn that of a person who is using a cider press or a person who has gleaned some fruit and walking by the brook or someone who is sleeping soundly in a field or someone who is sitting on the floor of uh, a storehouse that is full of grains actually he wants to say that autumn is everywhere wherever you see the activity of harvest being done autumn would be there if she would be person she would be even not more visible as she already is he has acute imagination he can see autumn at work everywhere around him where are the songs of spring a where are they think not of them the hast thy music do while bard clouds bloom the soft dying day and touch the stubble plains with rosy hue then in a wailful coy the small nets mourn among the river sallows borne aloft or sinking as the light wind lives or dies and full grown lambs loud bleat from hilly bourn hedge cricket sing and now we travel soft the red breast whistles from a garden croft and gathering swallows twitter in the sky the third stanza begins with a question where are the songs of spring a where are they the poet asks a question that where are the songs that were sung in the spring songs of spring can be the real songs and they can be all the things that happen in spring all the voices and the flowers blooming and the light winds blowing the poet says everything that spring brought is gone where is everything gone then he answers think not of them he says do not think about the spring thou hast thy music too he says autumn you have your own music that is very different from the spring all the same it is as acute as beautiful as that of spring while bard clouds bloom the soft dying day soft dying day the day is dying this is time of the evening by evening keeps also can mean his own coming death he says that this is the evening of life and the clouds are barred barred mean that they are in different shades and hues and they are blooming by blooming it means that the sky is pink because of the clouds there is a pink color a blooming color on the sky because of the clouds he means to say that day is dying but it is no means ugly or horrible it is beautiful death of the day is beautiful and touch the stubble plains stubble plains are the empty fields from which all the crops have been taken away cut down and all the stubble plains are turning pink because of the color that is in the sky it is reflected in the stubble plains 
so even the empty fields do not feel sad do not look ugly because they are touched by the sky's pink color keats is showing that ending of something be it a season be it his own death is not bad it is not evil it is not horrible it is calm and quiet and beautiful and natural because everything is transient everything has to go every person has to go and there need not be make it a horrible thing then in a wailful choir the small nets mourn then the nets who are the little uh, insects that are found in the grass they start mourning they start crying weeping over something that is gone and there is a wailful choir of them wailful mean crying weeping and the choir means actually the people who sing in the church where but here it means many insects when they sing together they feel like a choir is singing so the little insects are crying they are sad over something maybe they are sad because the day is done among the river sallows this sound is coming from the river that has become quite shallow now and it is a river that is no longer filled with water because of the fall because of the autumn the river has less water now born aloft or sinking those voices are carried over the river and sometimes you can hear them and sometimes those voices of the insects are very dim very sinking as the light wind lives or dies the voices are dependent on the wind because the wind carries them when it is blowing and when the wind dies it mean the wind stops the voices will also stop from coming so the wind is bringing the voices of the insects from the river and those voices come and go they flicker sometimes they are loud sometimes they are light but those voices are sad voices these are quite unlike the happy songs that birds sing in the season of spring so the sadness of autumn sadness of death is conveyed in the poem as well and full grown lambs loud bleat from hilly bourne wordsworth in his poems shows little lambs the babies who have just come out of their uh, other lives and entered our world and uh, such little lambs are mostly seen in the spring but now all the spring has passed all the summer has passed and lambs are now full grown they are no they are no longer little babies they loud bleat from hilly bourne from the high hill up there there is a sound of the lambs bleating that is coming that sound is totally different from that of the spring where the, it was very low and it was very little sound because the lambs were very young hedge cricket sing hedge crickets the hedges that are made to uh, cover the fields from intruders the hedges that are all around the houses there from there we can he- hear the cicadas or crickets singing their voices are mostly loudest at the time of the evening so the uh, songs of the evening are beautifully depicted here you can see that keats was showing us something in the previous stanza and now he is making us hear things he is a poet of senses he uses all of them very skillfully and now he is using the sound uh, his sense of hearing and also making us hear what he is hearing at that time now with the treble soft now with a certain musical term is used here treble soft that softly singing some bird is heard the red breast whistles from a garden croft the red breast robin red breast can be heard this is a beautiful bird that has red feathers on its breast and this bird comes to these areas of england in autumn and he would be one of the very few birds who stay the winter so the red breast has also arrived and it is whistling from a garden croft in the garden it is situated somewhere and it is whistling and gathering swallows twitter in the sky and then there are swallows the ababils who are gathering in the sky and their twitter one can easily hear what does keats hear 
there are songs of spring no songs of spring are gone there is the another music that music is the music of fall and he can hear that he can hear the small choir of small gnats he can hear the sound of the light wind who lives and dies then he can hear the lambs bleating hedge cricket singing then the red breast red breast whistles and the swallows twitter he has used different words for the sound of each insect and each bird he wants to tell that after spring is gone and summer is gone everything is not ended everything is replaced every season has different type of songs different voices different sort of beauty and as uh, uh, we have also read that a poet has said that in autumn every leaf is a flower it is another kind of spring where every leaf is a flower as you can see in the picture as well that no tree could be more beautiful than those orange and brown and dark green and yellow trees it looks as beautiful as if the trees are full with flowers instead of leaves so every season is beautiful ending is beautiful beginning is beautiful beauty needs to be appreciated whenever it comes and keats has even made death of the day and his own incoming death beautiful what are the themes here one theme is man's connection to the natural world to autumn is a poem that uh, connects to natural landscape and images in the first stanza we see that human being and plants have a connection with them and the second one describes how agriculture is important how it is controlled by people while the third stanza shows the things that are not in human control so nature is not only your friend it is also wild and it has its own territory in its own will then it is the theme of time uh, you can see that in the poem autumn and spring both are mentioned but winter is not mentioned because this is a hopeful poem and keats doesn't want to talk about winter yet when we appreciate autumn we should forget that how every day is getting shorter and chillier because the speaker has focused on the present moment he is not thinking what the future might bring the natural world full of sunlight and ripeness it is shown and the last stanza shows the sun setting even that setting is not shown sadly or dejectedly then one theme is transformation autumn is the time of transformation between the growth of summer and dormancy of winter things are winding down once the harvest is complete there is nothing left to do but wait until the next season much of the transformation in the poem occurs between stanzas for example in the first stanza fruits and gourds are swelling outside before they will be picked by food second stanza the harvest is already complete or mostly complete and dry apples have been turned into rich delicious cider third stanza focuses only on transmer transformative event the setting of the sun one theme is mortality autumn is frequently used as a symbol in literature for old ages the time before death symbolized by winter to autumn avoids any super obvious reference to death but we do get some subtle ones like the oblivious bees and uh, that same thing that summer will last forever or the hook that spares the poppy flower from their inevitable end as the day begins to die in the final section entire landscape contributes to the song of morning thanks for watching best of luck hopefully this lecture was interesting and you found something that would go for you forever